Hello everybody, welcome back. This is Galrock the Pizza Guy and it's episode 20, yeah, 20 of Agrarian Skies 2. Now last episode we got some of this processing started and like I said between episodes I got a lot of patterns set up for these auto processing. So, you can see I even taught this how to make tesseracts for me. That's right, automatic tesseract. And I got this set up for all the different kinds of circuits, so we're good to go there. And got that set up for all the crystals. And I've added a few more discs into the drive over here just for uh, keeping this going. I also made one minor change over here. I was having the problem that... Uh, this barrel, I had a barrel here that was collecting all the sand and then the sand was going from the barrel to create the soul sand over here. Well, unfortunately when this barrel filled up, the secondary outputs that were coming out of this pulverizer here were uh, just getting thrown on the ground. And I could see it wasn't going to take long for that to cause a bunch of lag. So I decided to eliminate that barrel from the equation and uh, just stuck the sand in the system. I mean, it's not like we're not using it over here to make glass, right? So, that settles that. A oh, couple of things I want to show you. Um, nether wart. I need nether wart to crossbreed. If we can show, yeah, to crossbreed to make the red mushroom spores, which I'm probably going to need for some other stuff. And I also need it for the nitre wart spores, which, if I'm not mistaken, produces glowstone, uh, which, you know, glowstone below there, so. But, and, and I tried this, and I'll show you, uh, show you the problem that I ran into. grab one of these crop sticks and a nether wart. This plant cannot grow here. You can see that on the uh, Wayla tool tip at the top. Well the problem is nether wart needs darkness. it won't grow in light. So, I've got this room set up over here. Uh, where the soul sand is, it's only one block tall. That way nothing's going to spawn in there. I put half slabs in here so nothing will spawn inside this dark room. So we just need some way to uh, darken the room off because even now, grab some more of those crop sticks. See, there's still too much light in here. The plant will not grow. So how are we going to darken that room up? Well, I think we can make some blackout curtains. So I'm just going to use some of these random colors of wool that I've got here. There we go. And now come back over here and put these up. Now unfortunately it gives me one red X right here so there is the chance slight chance of something spawning in this one spot right here to be a problem but now that the room is dark you can see now it says this plant is fertile and can grow so I'm gonna let those grow and I'll work on those just like everything else I've been working on in between episodes and uh, you might also notice I've got mushrooms, the brown mushrooms, growing over here now. Got to have that on mycelium. All right. So that covers that stuff. At the end of last episode, I was saying I want flight. 
Well, I taught the system to make a bunch of stuff. Um, and I should have the ability to make everything I need to get a good jetpack going. Got myself an energy, the energetic infuser set up over here to uh, charge up with. So let's give this a try. Okay, for a leadstone jetpack, all I've got is the lead. So we need a leadstone flux capacitor. Get that started. We need two of these thrusters. Nice. And we need that leather strap. And now, we've got a leadstone jetpack. Now that one's not bad, but we can definitely do better. So let's upgrade that to a hardened jetpack. What have we got? Well, we've already got a hardened flux capacitor, so just need a couple of those thrusters. Let's see all this stuff that it's crafting. And we can watch the status. There we go. Hardened jetpack. Much better. We can still do better, though. So let's move up to the reinforced. We need some more electrum. We need a couple of these thrusters. Uh-oh. What am I... I'm missing Envar gears. Okay, that brings me to something I wanted to automate. I set up another small smeltery over here. And this one I'm feeling with blazing pyrothium instead of lava. Because that stuff burns a lot hotter, so anything we need to melt down will melt down quicker in there. So my plan is to try and use that smeltery to auto craft the gears because I've got it where it'll craft some of the gears you know it'll craft tin copper and bronze but if we look this up in any eye those are the only ones that are actually craftable see anything else we've got to pour into the cast well the only way we're going to do that is with a smeltery. So I'm going to put the gear cast there. And let's try. We need an interface. Crafting glass. Another good thing those gears are going to be useful for. I'm going to be able to speed these machines up, and that is definitely something I want to do, because I'm getting impatient waiting on glass to cook up. Matter of fact, just so we have some sitting and ready to go, let's do that. That'll run for a while. Alright, I'm going to put this interface right here. And that means, actually, I can get rid of those item ducts because I'm going to have that cable in there. And we should be online now. Nice. All right. If we look that up in the interface terminal, let's see. A smeltery controller. Nice. So the one we just ran into was an Envar gear problem. So let's uh, make up some Envar. We'll just make up about 10. Go. I did also add a second uh, crafting processor downstairs because I wanted to be able to do more than one thing at a time. So we can see there it's crafting the Envar and that one is crafting the glass. And obviously I have added a lot. Ooh, it's snowing! That's the uh, automatic sieves up there. 
I also added acceleration cards between episodes to these molecular assemblers. Makes any of the crafting assembly stuff process faster. Alright, we need a couple more things. Fluiduct. And we need servo. Let's use some resonant servos. And it's crafting other stuff, so we'll let it do that while we set a few other things up. need one more. Alright. The servo's done, they are done. Alright. So just like over there, I'm gonna set the servo up here to do its thing. Now, if I need more than one type of gear at a time, I'm a little bit worried about metals possibly trying to mix in here. That's why I only made it a four block internal smeltery. I'm hoping that, since all the gears require four ingots, I'm hoping that's going to prevent any unwanted mixing. So, we're going to find out. So we want to make Envar gear. Let's call this a processing pattern. So for Envar, throw those in there and watch how fast that temperature runs. Yeah. Yeah, that should prevent any mixing of metals in that smeltery, I think. That's, that is my one big worry. Equals one in var gear. Encode that pattern and let's put it on the smeltery controller interface, which is down here somewhere. There it is. So, let's tell the system we want to make another in var gear. It threw the Envar in. Nice. It's working. I wasn't sure that was going to work. I, I Honestly, I didn't test this or anything. I just uh, went ahead and prepared it and hoped it was going to work. And it did. Nice. So I'm going to teach that thing a few more gears real quick. And I'll be back in just a minute. All right got that taken care of so now the system knows how to make Envar gears, Signalum gears, Electrum gears, and Enderium gears. So where were we? Oh yeah, the reinforced jetpack. So we need some Electrum. That's gonna craft up real quick. Okay, not real quick, but it's going to craft up. Alright, a couple of reinforced thrusters. I taught the system how to make those. There we go. There we go. Now it's going to be able to do that. And how's this doing? Crafting that. Just crafting some destabilized redstone. Nice. Auto crafting is just the best. All right, and now finally resonant jetpack. Alright, what did that need? That needs resonant flux capacitor and two resonant thrusters. Mm. 
Oh, I love auto crafting. Almost done. Make that resonant flux capacitor for it. Watch that craft. Oh, yeah. We have a resonant jet pack. Nice. Now, that's nice and all, but if I put it on, I lose my armor. Well, we can fix that too. We can make it an armored jetpack. So we need Enderium armor plating. So let's find out what it's going to take to make that. Needs Envar plating, which needs bronze plating, which needs iron plating. So there's the iron plating. Now to make that into bronze plating, we needed what? Ten bronze? Yeah. So let's throw that in the induction smelter. Nice. So for the next one we need 10 Envar and the next one we need 10 Endarium. Let's see. Good thing I taught this system how to make this stuff. Let that finish up. Alright. let that run. In the meantime, I think I'm going to teach this thing how to make the upgraded machine frames. So if we teach it how to do that, we need an Electrum gear, right? Okay, there we go. Got that. Probably going to need to make some more in VAR now. Let those finish cooking up. Yep. Let's just tell it 10 more. I'm going to do the same thing for the Enderium just because. I need hardened glass. Finally, the resonant frame. Okay. Sorry, just had to teach it those real quick now that it knew how to craft gears. And we're going to work on, uh, I'll probably work in between episodes on upgrading those, and then next episode we'll work on those augments. So, anyway, we've got the bronze armor plating. Envar. Well, we're waiting on that induction smelter to finish still. Okay, nothing has spawned over here yet, so there is that. 
and the nether wart's growing. And by the way, when I use that to uh, crossbreed, I think what I'll be able to do is take a fully grown one and move it with the trowel. And as a matter of fact, when I get to that stage, I'll be sure to show that on camera so that uh, you can see what I'm talking about there. this let that cook up there we go and we just craft those together thought that oh there we go like that all right now when I put the jet pack on I should have armor. Maybe it needs a little charge. Let's see. That'll do for the moment. Yep, that's what it was. Alright. So I'm going to go ahead and let that thing charge up. And I'll put that back on in a minute. Matter of fact, while I let that thing charge up, I'm going to uh, be right back. Alright, I'm back with my jetpack on. Now you can see that fall was a little bit scary, but let's use hover mode. There we go. It does burn up more fuel like that, but... What's that guy doing there? Well, let me show you. I'll turn the engine off for now. And, uh, I'm gonna make a rancher. Well, what do I have? I need shears. We need the plastic pipe. Okay, system knows how to make the rest of that stuff. So one redstone reception coil and one tin gear. There we go. You know, that guy's going to come out and attack me as soon as I try to replace that fence. I did not, for the record, put that cow in there. He spawned in there after I set the spot up. And if you're wondering why it's grassy, I was originally going to uh, put sheep in there also. But I realized that... I've got a seed for wool. There we go. So uh, what that means is I don't have to worry about shearing sheep. All right, got it in there. Ouch. Okay, that wall's just going to lay there. Fine. I also taught the system how to make the solar panels. I've even got a solar panel 2 ready to go. Nice. And let's see. I should have some spare energy cells going on in here. Yeah, this hardened energy cell will do... I'm going to give this sucker an initial charge real quick. Where can I... Here we go. I can do this. Or maybe 
this. There we go. Now this solar panel with that energy cell should be more than enough power to keep that rancher running. And I'm not going to have just the one cow in there. I do plan on putting more in. But uh, this way we'll be able to have milk. So while we let that charge, let's look at the liquid crafter. So we need a couple of portable tanks. We need a pneumatic servo. How's that do for us? We need books. There we go. And a crafting table. There we go. We're going to use, don't need the sorting barrel, just a regular barrel will do. I'm going to set that up there. We'll set the liquid crafter right there. I know it's a mess of pipes and wiring, but I mean, hey, it's a sky block. Maybe now that I've got flight, I'll have an easier time figuring out some way to reroute this piping where it won't be quite so much in the way. We'll see. In the meantime, we need fluid ducts and a couple of servos. And the temperate fluid duct should work just fine because it is milk. Would three be enough? One, two, nope. Okay. That, however, should be. Let's go over here and get this set up. Basically, we want this thing to fill up with milk. So let's see. This should have enough of a charge on it by now. Oh well, I had to kill him. I was afraid that was going to happen. But that's okay. We can uh, put another cow in there. No problem. So we should be outputting to the bottom. Yeah. Yep, full power. And put the solar panel there. There we go. Now that ought to keep this thing running for us. Now I need cows. I've got some over there. Two should be enough. There 
There we go. No. Finish killing the rest of these guys off no. so I can go in there and collect the loot. Ouch. No. Ouch. The animals in this are brutal. Make sure to close the gate. There we go. Couple of cows in there, and we're getting milk. Nice. So I'm going to let that run for a minute. I am almost done with uh, what I wanted to get done this episode. So I'll be back in just a minute. Alright, got a backlog of milk in the drum now. I'm going to have to find the volume control for that jetpack. I feel like it's overpowering me. I'm sorry if it's too loud. I'll check after this episode. And if it is, I'll uh, see if I can figure out a way to quiet that jetpack so it's not drowning me out anymore. Uh, let's see, what was I about to do? Oh yeah, I need an item duct. And I should still have my servo, yeah. Alright, got a few extra buckets of milk in the drum now. Really, I could have just pulled it directly out of the liquid crafter this whole time. Anyway, we're going to teach the liquid crafter how to make fresh milk. And that's going to be useful to us later when we need butter and cheese and that kind of stuff. We're going to put our servo on here. Ignored. All we need now is a redstone clock. So, because that liquid crafter needs a redstone pulse for it to operate. So one redstone torch. There we go. A redstone clock. Whoa. And we'll just put that right there. And there we go. We're getting fresh milk now. Nice. And yes, as a matter of fact, I do have quite a lot of fresh milk in here already. Apparently I found my caps lock. But, uh, you know, can't have too much. And I know it's time to call it a day. This is what I'm going to be working with next episode. I think I've got enough of that gardening ready to uh, start doing something with it. So, and that's what all this new platform area is for as well. So, I'll show you what we've got going on then. And until next time, don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Galrock Family on there. And this is Galrock the Pizza Guy, reminding everybody to tip those pizza delivery drivers. We're out there working hard for you. See you next time.